everyone i have just filmed my fairy loot unboxing video but this one is actually going to go live first because not many people have already had their fairy loot boxes so i'm going to put that one up later to give people a chance to open their boxes first so welcome back to another video <laughs> essentially is what i'm trying to say we've had to change our setup for this one because the amount of books i'm about to show you is a bit ridiculous and I didn't want to carry them over my desk. I wanted to have them on the floor around me, which is easier to manage. So we're here in front of my bookshelves with my very big TBR there and there. Maybe I like it like this, but it means I have to sacrifice my nice lighting because my fancy light can't work without it being plugged in. And there's no plug sockets here. So we'll see. We will see. Anyway, um, I am filming this video on Thursday the 15th of April 2021 and on Monday on the 12th bookshops opened for the first time since Christmas Eve. I didn't go to a bookshop on Christmas Eve because I was working and so I think the last time I went to a bookshop was like the start of December so that is like five months without going into a bookshop. It's a long time a very long time so on Monday they reopened again for the first time and myself and my friend Sarah went to about eight bookshops because I missed them and I wanted to go to as many as I could and make up for lost time. The purpose of this wasn't also just to run into bookshops and like buy every book I wanted, although it was tempting as that might have been. I also wanted to find some new independent bookshops which I could support and some small businesses and buy some more secondhand books and mission accomplished because I found at least three new bookshops that I really want to go to more on a regular basis now which i will get into as we get to them so without further ado i have 19 books to talk about so let's just get going so i will talk about the books that i bought in the order of the shops i went to but not in the order of which i picked the books up because even though i can't remember that but um so the first bookshop i went to was the amnesty bookshop in kentish town if you have followed my instagram for a while you'll know i go to this bookshop quite a lot it is in kentish town where they sell secondhand books that have been donated to them. All the money they make from the books they sell goes towards the charity Amnesty. So you're not only getting some decent secondhand books, you're also getting a chance to support charity. So it's a double win. And this bookshop's really good. I've got some really good finds in there before. Some like really nice hardbacks, some international copies of my favourite books. So yeah, I really, really love this shop. This is also actually the bookshop where I got the most of my books from this day trip haul. So um, I got, how many did I get actually? One, two, three, four, five, six. I bought seven books in this bookshop alone, which set the bar very high for the rest of the day. So the first book I have is by Chris Colfer and it is The Land of Stories. This is a middle grade book, but I am under the belief that if a book makes you happy, you should just read it anyway. Like if it interests you, just pick it up. It doesn't matter what age it's aimed at. Um, this book is basically about two children who read I think it's like fairy stories and the fairy stories come to life. I don't really know much more about it than that, but it sounds really cute and really fun. And I really love this cover as well. So I picked up this middle grade book and I'm really excited to read that. Next up is by Elif Shafak and that is Three Daughters of Eve. If you have followed my Instagram for a while, you'll know that Elif Shafak is an author I love. She writes about Turkey in a really honest and realistic way and I love her books. I've read three or four now I think but I have not read this one and I felt really sorry for the bookseller because they literally had just put it on the table and I was like well I'm gonna take that book right off you again. But I don't really know anything about this book at all so I'm excited to just go in knowing nothing. Staying on the theme of Turkey, I picked up a non-fiction book called The Turks Today. Now this I literally just got because of the title of it. I know it's non-fiction about history and it's basically about after the Turkish Republic was started by um, Kemal Ataturk. But other than that, I don't really know much at all. But I just, again, I have no objection to going to a book not knowing anything and just being pleasantly surprised. Next up is Pompeii, the day a city died. Now, if you know me, you'll know I really love ancient history and ancient Greece and ancient Rome and anything ancient history based I love reading about and learning about. And I got to go to Pompeii when I was at college as part of a history trip and I had an amazing time. It was so fascinating. Like it just feels like Pompeii is just trapped in time. It's, incredible if you ever get a chance to go i can't recommend it enough and this book seems like a really nice concise way to read about pompeii it's got loads of pictures it's written in a really simple way that i can understand 
and it's basically about Pompeii before, during and after the events of the eruption of Vesuvius, so I'm really excited about that. Next is a book I've been wanting to read for so long and have just never gotten around to it, and that is Death on the Nile by Agatha Christie. I've always wanted to read Agatha Christie books and I just never have, I've never picked them up and I don't know why, so when I saw this in the Amnesty bookshop I was like okay now is my chance to read it. I watched the film of Murder on Orient Express and I loved it but I have not got a book of that so I do need to read that but I have not yet seen the film of Death on the Nile so I need to watch the film but after I've read the book so I'm very excited about this one. I now have a copy of The Kite Runner, which I already have a copy of, and if you know me you'll know this is one of my favourite books ever. I say that a lot, but this genuinely is one of my favourite books ever. It's such an emotional and powerful and incredible story, like I cannot recommend this book enough. If you haven't read it already, please, please, please pick up a copy and give it a read. But I picked up this copy purely because of the cover, because I have not got this cover and I really like this cover. I actually did pick up another copy of this as well for my friend Sarah because I was like I refuse to let you leave the bookshop without buying the book because I want you to read it so I just gifted her the copy for her but yeah this beautiful cover of the kite runner I might have to use it as an excuse to reread the book again and the last book I got from the Amnesty bookshop was at Jamaica Inn again I already have this book but I like this cover more than the cover I've got Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier is another one of my favourite books and I love Daphne du Maurier's writing so to make it in is a book that I love but I haven't read in so many years so it'll be nice to revisit it and remind myself of this story. It is set in Cornwall which is where my mum's side of the family is from and my mum hasn't got her own copy of this so maybe I can give my copy to her and I can keep this copy. The next bookshop we went to was the Owl Bookshop and the Owl Bookshop sells brand new books but it's an independent bookshop and in there I only got one book but that was Remisa, I think I'm saying that right, I really hope I'm saying that right. It's a Rapunzel retelling but instead of her letting her hair down it's about letting her hijab down and by the sounds of the back of it she doesn't have to rely solely on a prince. It says for as long as she can remember Remisa has been locked away in her tower, forced to spin straw into gold for the evil witch, unable to leave, until one day after dropping a hijab out of her small window, Remisa realises how she might be able to escape. <gasps> that sounds really cool. It sounds really good. Yeah, I, I've, I've, this has been on my radar for a while, and when I saw it on a table in the owl bookshop, I was like, I need it, I'm gonna get it, this is my excuse. So that was my purchase from the owl bookshop that was book a and we're halfway there the next bookshop i went to was a bookshop on brick lane which is the brick lane bookshop and they sell new books and they're an independent bookstore and this is probably my favorite independent bookstore that i found on this shopping day experience they were just really welcoming it felt really safe the staff were really friendly and lovely and chatty you can tell that they were really happy to be there i guess everyone was happy to be there because it's the first day the shops opened but this was the bookshop that made me feel really welcomed and it was really like comforting going inside and i just i can't praise this bookshop enough highly like i left there and i was like that felt like a warm hug in bookshop form also i got a really cute tote bag before i get into the actual books look at that that's really cute and then on the other side it just says Brick Lane Bookshop. I love a good tote bag and I needed one at this point and I just thought that was really cute. So yeah, if you're ever in London, head to Brick Lane and find a Brick Lane Bookshop. I love it. So in there I bought two books and the first one I picked up was It's Not About the Burka. It's a non-fiction book. My friend Chloe on Bookstagram read it and I think it's basically lots of women who have come together to write short pieces on wearing a hijab or a burka or Islamophobia or anything around that topic and it's all been compiled into this book here and that's really all I know but I thought with it being the start of Ramadan as well when I picked it up it was a really appropriate read and I'm really excited to read it and see what's in store. The next book I picked up was Detransition Baby by Tori Peters. I don't really know much about this book. I remember I um, saw one of those posts where it was like what you should read based on your star sign and this was on there and I read about it on there and I it really caught my attention but I can't remember what the actual content was so I'll just read the inside blurb now. Reese nearly had it all. A loving relationship with Amy, an apartment in New York, a job she didn't hate. She'd scraped together a life previous generations of trans women could only dream of. The only thing missing was a child. Then everything fell apart and three years on, Reese is still in self-destruct mode, avoiding her loneliness by sleeping with married men. When her ex calls to ask if she wants to be a mother, Reese finds herself intrigued. After being attacked in the street, Amy detransitioned to become Ames, changed jobs and thinking he was infertile, started an affair with his boss, Katrina. Now Katrina is pregnant, could three of them form an unconventional family? 
and raise the baby together that was why it caught my attention i've not read many books written by trans authors or regarding trans characters i think i've only read like three or four and it sounds like it could be a really interesting and lovely read so i'm really looking forward to diving in with this one next up was a bookshop in bloomsbury called scoop books and this was the second amazing bookshop find of the day and i really had a great time in this bookshop i could have spent all day in there honestly like you walk in it's just floor to ceilings across the whole building of books like i was in my absolute element i could have spent a whole day just reading every single title and losing myself in their shelves but miraculously i only left this bookshop with one book by this point i was like I really need to slow down with the book buying because at this point I had like nine books, ten books. I was like, I'm, I'm not going to be able to carry these home. I'm going to be like needing a suitcase. So I left here one book and that is Memoirs of a Geisha. And I literally know absolutely nothing about this book, but I picked it up because it's my friend Helen's favourite read. And if you have a favourite book, I will want to read it to know why it's your favourite because I think people's favourite books are always quite special because it always means something to them it means they found something in those pages that's really impacted them to make it their favourite read so I love reading other people's favourite reads so I picked this up because it's Helen's favourite book and I'm really excited to see why she loves it so much and then the next place we went to was a Oxfam charity shop but one that only sells books and this was another book shopping experience I loved because they had so many books of such a variety and I picked up three books in here the first of which is Istanbul in women's short stories it does what it says on the tin it is women's short stories compiled to tell you about the city of Istanbul in Turkey. That is exactly why I picked it up because I think that's a really cool way to read about the city and especially as it's told from women's perspectives I think that'll be really an interesting read and I am really looking forward to seeing what they have to say. Next book is Northern Lights. I have wanted to read this book for so long but I've just never picked up a copy and never had a copy and I remember I watched The Golden Compass when I was a little girl like 10 or 11 or whenever it came out and I was so confused but obviously you need to read the book first and so I was on the hunt for a book in a second hand bookshop and I've just never seen one and this is the first time I found a copy in a second hand bookshop so naturally I had to pick it up and this cover is absolutely stunning I'm so glad I got it because it's so pretty and this is my friend Meg's favourite book so at the same time as reading a series I wanted to read for ages I get to read my friend Meg's favourite book too so double win and then the final book I got in this bookshop was Cloud Atlas and I picked this up because it was one of my friend's favourite reads that is the only reason I, again I know nothing about it but if it's someone's favourite book I will read it so this is another book that I'm just really excited to know nothing about, just dive in and see what it has in store. So I went out onto the final secondhand bookshop. It is a bookshop on Charing Cross Road. Can't remember the name of it off the top of my head. I'll put it here if I do remember the name of it or if I can Google it and find out. Two shops on Charing Cross Road, one that sells only antique books, which we didn't go to because they're quite expensive because they're, you know, first editions. And then there's one that just sells any kind of secondhand books. And in here I picked up three. The first one was Pandora's Jar. And this book, I think, is like a collection of stories telling about the women in Greek myths. And like I said earlier, we all know I love some Greek mythology. So I'm really excited to read this one. I'm guessing from the title, it's obviously going to contain a story about Pandora's Jar. The book I picked up was Bright Things A Girl. No, wrong way around. Things A Bright Girl Can Do. Not Bright Things A Girl Can Do things a bright girl can do and this is basically a story of like a group of girls who are suffragettes in the suffragette movement so that in itself is amazing from the sounds of it two of the girls are gay and in love with each other so it'll be really interesting to see how that is written about within this time period as well and this just sounds like a really amazing and interesting read and then the final book i got in this bookshop was an advanced reader's copy and that is the only reason i picked it up it's out in january 21 so it's out by now anyway but i picked it up because it's an advanced reader's copy and i was like well i don't want to leave it here i want it i want to pick it up there was three copies of this so me and my friend sarah both got a copy and we're planning a buddy read of it so if you happen to have the published edition and you want to join us just let me know it is called the forest of moon and sword and the back of it says one girl's fierce journey to save her mother from the fate of the witch trials with only nature to guide her way. A lyrical tale of courage and friendship with folklore at its heart, beautifully in illustrated by August Rowe. Oh, I didn't know it was illustrated. My copy's not been illustrated. That's probably why it's an advanced reader's copy, because they're like, 
the illustrations aren't done yet but um that just sounds really interesting to me like the whole witchcraft and witch trials that sort of thing instantly grabs my attention so this book sounds right up my street i'm really excited to be reading it and even better to be doing it as a buddy read so double win and we are on to the last bookshop this was waterstones we went here just to have a look around waterstones because obviously the whole day was about finding independent bookshops and secondhand bookshops but it was nice to go to Waterstones as well and in here I picked up three books but I only have two of them here because one of them was for my friend Sasha she wanted a um, Own Voices Muslim book so I bought her A Very Large Expansive Sea because that is the first Muslim book I read in a very 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 long time because I didn't know of any and it really touched my heart I love it so much it's one of my absolute favourite reads if you're looking for an Own Voices Muslim read or just a really good book please give a very large expense expansive sea of read it is fantastic anyway so i got sash that and i certainly have that right now so i don't have the book with me but i picked up two other books the first one is the jungle so i wasn't going to pick this up and then i saw the spine of it on the shelf like that and i was like the jungle does that mean the same jungle as the calais french refugee camp and i looked at the back of it all i saw was calais refugee camp and i was like that's it i have to buy it if you've um, followed my Instagram, you'll know that I am a big supporter of Choose Love and help refugees and the work they do. And I went to the Calais camp, oh gosh, two, three, four years ago, some point in the past, and volunteered there for a week and a bit. And it was just an experience I will never forget. So when I saw a book based around that very subject, I was like, there is no way I am leaving this bookshop without this book. And the last book I bought was Internment. It is about a girl called Layla and her family who are Muslim put into an American internment camp. So I think that this one's gonna be a very hard hitting and emotional read, but I am looking forward to reading it to see what it has to offer as well. I do have one bonus book. I came home that day from the bookshop Adventures and my mum was like, oh, there's something for you that arrived today. And then she saw the amount of books I had and she was like, no more books. Please don't buy any more books for a while. You've got 19. I was like, yeah, yeah, I won't buy books for a while. I won't buy books for a while. The thing that arrived me in the post was another book. Lost in the Neverwoods by Aidan Thomas. This book's been on my radar since like it was announced and I'm so happy my order is finally here. I can't wait to read it. Oh my gosh. It sounds kind of like Peter Pan but a bit darker and it features the characters we know and love from Peter Pan but it just sounds like a bit of a darker story so I'm really excited to read this. So that was the 19 books I bought on that bookshop day and one bonus book for you i hope you kind of enjoyed the video i hope it was somewhat interesting i hope maybe you've added some books to your tbr because of it i don't really know i just bought a lot of books and i wanted to share them which i have now done so mission accomplished and to be honest i have i just stop waving this book around before i drop it and to be honest i have conquered my fear of doing youtube videos which is an even bigger win so that was fun i don't know how to end these i always do fine in the middle well fine-ish and then it gets to the end and i'm like what do i do now well i'm gonna go edit these videos that's what i'm gonna go do now i'm gonna try and read some more of my four current reads why am i reading four books at once normally my limit is two four is just too much no 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 Let, let's let's cut that list down to two let's try and finish two books today i hope you all stay happy and healthy have happy reading and i'm sending you all lots of love Thank you so much for watching and bye.